So national academies are slightly different beasts from uh, the organization we've had so far, but for the context of today's talk, perhaps we just home in on the funding bit on the third uh, bullet point there. And we are relatively small funders, we're niche funders, but I think we probably punch, yeah, maybe it is a good idea to switch off devices. Thank you. Um, we are kind of punching a bit about our weight because we're really homing in on a particular aspect which is also relevant for the Newton uh, context and that is that we are homing on supporting the most talented people we can find and making sure they make it through the various career stages and that is also kind of the theme how we work our way through the Newton Fund. And I have to say it's only at postdoctoral level, so we're not running any PhD training courses or scholarships. It's really at the postdoctoral level. And we have a number of either already established and trusted mechanisms and some bespoke uh, mechanisms that are sort of following, if you like, the career stages of, of scientists. And if you look at the aims, this is really about skill transfer, about capacity strengthening, if you uh, look at it in the older context, to make sure that people in those countries that we're working with, with partner organizations in those countries, that people are getting better at <coughs> what they're doing in the lab or outside the lab. So this is about skill transfer, acquisition of new skills, honing existing skills. And I think there's a huge role to play for higher education institutions uh, in the context of development. And we are doing this mainly by homing in on uh, various career stages on particular people and really through fostering and facilitating new collaboration because that is really how the skill transfer can then be accomplished. Um, we have various ways of doing it. I'm sorry, something cut off that didn't happen when I tested it. Um, uh, most of those are fellowships. Um, I'm going to talk about the first two and the mobility grants and then I hand over to Shane mm. from the RA Ange, uh, Royal Academy of Engineering to talk about the new leadership and innovation program. It's slightly different. It has a slightly different target group as well. Um, I will do it in the, in the range of uh, sort of early to, to later career stages. First of all, an established uh, scheme that we've been running since 2008 is the Newton International Fellowships, which we uh, now apply also for the uh, Newton Funds context. This is typically really aiming at very early uh, career stages of postdoctoral researchers, and we know from experience it's usually their first postdoc um, after they have finished their PhD. So this is mostly about training, because at that time you've got the ticket for your apprenticeship in science with your PhD, but you have to get better at what you're doing, and you really have to become better at it in order to have a career later on. So this is really about acquisition and honing of skills. Um, it's basically an incoming fellowship. People can come to the UK for up to two years and we supply them with a stipend, research money and also relocation cost over the two years of up to 66,000 pounds. That's the basic cost for each of those fellowships. And because we're working in partnership across the Royal Society, the AMS and the British Academy, we're pretty much covering the entire range of scientific areas. Once you actually sort of think you've honed your skills and you really want to stand out as a scientist, as an independent scientist in your own right, it's very important to give people the means to do just that, to enhance their visibility and actually get the recognition by their peers. So this is a new mechanism, the Newton Advanced Fellowship. This is a bespoke uh, scheme for the Newton Funds. And this is for people who want to not go somewhere, but they are staying in their host institution in Brazil, in, in South Africa, but really have to thresh out a career and actually survive in a very competitive market. And here we can, again, through the collaboration with the UK lab, give help in order to, again, acquire skills. This might also be skills like management skills and how you mentor your own postdocs and postgrad students. This is for uh, mid-career, early to mid-career researchers, and it's about development of a career. So these candidates would have up to 15 years of postdoctoral uh, experience. And we would cover a period of up to three years, and they can actually have various short stays in the UK or invite over their UK partners. They could also send over one of their group members, like a postdoc or specific kind of training that they need in their, in their laboratory. And it would actually cover costs for salary top-ups, as long as that is actually possible within the different organizational makeups, research support, <laughs> training cost, and as I said, the exchange visits between the UK and whatever country we are working with at the moment. So this is up to 37,000 pounds per year. So if you 
uh, multiply that by three is just over 110 thousand pounds per three years. And again, it's covering the entire remit as we're working with the AMS and the BA. Now for mobility grants, the mixture of academies who are actually involved is slightly different now. We've replaced the, uh, uh, the AMS with the Royal Academy of Engineering. This is really uh, sort of a mechanism to foster new, uh, hopefully long-term relationship partnerships between UK uh, labs and labs in those Newton Fund countries. Depending on who is actually offering the funding, it can range from 10,000 to 24,000 pounds per year, uh, uh, no, per, yeah, per uh, the two-year period. And this is really a mechanism that is actually open to anyone in early, uh, as well as more so mature career, career stages. But again, the emphasis is very much about benchmarking, about acquisition of new skills and on long-term collaboration, because long-term collaboration will usually benefit, of course, both sides, but it's very much focused on, on the uh, new partner countries. So, as Madeline said, we didn't have a year zero, which made things a bit more complicated because we had to negotiate uh, partnerships as we went along. And you mustn't forget that there is, of course, funding available from partner organizations which are not ruled by older rules necessarily. But uh, sort of getting funding through us is also, in a way, a ticket getting funding from those partner organizations. By and large, they are sort of reciprocal funding schemes like incoming fellowships uh, um, which are supplied, for example, by CONFAPI in Brazil or the NRF in South Africa. In India, where we are sort of in the latter stages of negotiating, I hope I can say that, so hopefully this is India will come on stream next year, we will probably have a mixed uh, sort of um, economy with the DST family, perhaps uh, joint funding where they put more money from their side into our Newton International Fellowships, which will benefit it because we have bigger numbers of people actually being able to come for training to the UK, and with the CSR, perhaps more the reciprocal pathway. So it can change, but by and large, it's sort of two bridgeheads offering on both sides support so that real partnerships can be formed. And one thing I really want to briefly highlight before I hand over to Shane um, is that unlike in other areas, we do not have priority areas. This is really about people. This is about making people into better scientists in the UK, but also, of course, very much in those part of countries. So we are really looking across the entire spectrum and looking for the talent that is out there and making them, uh, helping them, giving them a helping hand to become the future leaders in their field. And with that, I think I'm handing over to Shane. Thanks, Hans. Um, I'm Shane McHugh, I head up international activities at the Royal Academy of Engineering and I only have one slide, so that you, I'm sure you'll be happy. <laughs> um, uh, we, we, we decided, uh, uh, we do run uh, a mobility program um, along with the other academies. It, the, there's a call actually open at the moment uh, for the countries that Hans listed. It will close on the 24th of October for us, so you still have time. Um, but uh, we don't run fellowships, we decided um, we, 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 we decided and said to focus on uh, the area where uh, we, we have a kind of a niche specialism in the UK, which is all about funding excellent people working at the interface of academia and industry. Uh, so we created what we called um, uh, the Leaders in Innovation Program. Uh, we have um, the, 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 the partners there who are mentioned. Uh, uh, it's all in negotiation, little pieces of paper are going backwards and forwards and nearly being signed, but we're confident that, uh, that we will have activities going with those uh, in the first year, so before, um, before March 2015. Uh, and we're doing two activities, um, uh, what, uh, one aimed at individuals and another aimed at institutions. Uh, we run uh, Leaders in Innovation Fellowships, and these are essentially capsule uh, entrepreneurship training fellowships uh, to researchers uh, in in, in Newton partner countries who want to commercialize their innovation. Uh, it brings them to the UK for a two week period, uh, a, week of, um, a week of training, uh, mentorship, uh, master classes and some of the soft skills they'll need uh, to, uh, you know, to, 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 to commercialize their innovation. And then a, a, placement, a placement with a company uh, to solve an innovation challenge for them. Uh, there's a call for tenders currently open on the Academy's uh, website to help deliver this. Um, apologies, I don't have it on my slide, but I might give a, a copy of the link to Gwen to, to, to pass out among you. And certainly if you're interested, please speak to me or my colleague Matt later on today. 
Um, the other programme is called Higher Education Enhancement, and, and this is uh, this riffs off um, what we do in the UK with our visiting professor scheme, and also a, a, a really nice programme we're running in sub-Saharan Africa. And essentially, it's a capacity building programme for higher education institutions that builds links between them and locally based industry through a series of high level exchanges. Uh, both from academia into industry, industry into academia. And not only does this help uh, technology transfer and research links, uh, there's, also, uh, there's, there's also an intention that um, the uh, industry can input into the way engineering is taught, to the curriculum, to the facilities that are there, in order to ensure that the people who graduate have the skills to make them employable by local industry. Uh, everywhere we've gone, everyone has said, this is a problem but it's a slightly different problem in our country. Um, so, uh, uh, and so we haven't, uh, we haven't been as quick in, um, in putting this uh, together as we have the, the, the innovation fellowships. Um, we're looking with a couple of countries, uh, India, uh, Brazil, and South Africa, to begin scoping how to adapt this model to local conditions. Uh, so we'll have a uh, workshop in India in early 2015, probably workshops in those other countries as well. Uh, and one thing that's coming out very strongly from, um, uh, from partner countries is that they'd like to see UK institutions involved in these partnerships as well to play a kind of a mentorship role or to oversee or to pass on learning. So that's something, again, I'd be interested in talking to you about. It'll, this will happen in year two um, uh, now, but it might be something to talk about. And uh, with that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, the, the, the contact information uh, for um, uh, all the academies is here, but uh, also please talk to uh, myself, Hans, uh, Natasha, uh, our, and our other colleagues from, uh, from, from Ahmed Sai and the other academies. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to hand out cards and talk to, you, talk to you later as well. Okay, thanks very much.